Hey guys, in this video we're going to make a shirt, but we're going to do it a lot slower than what we did in the quick start video. I want to give you a lot of detailed information on every setting and kind of give you the options of why you might choose one setting over another. And it's going to take a little longer than going through that quick video at the beginning. So we're going to upload finished artwork or we can also click on add a product. And here's where it says use one of their templates. Now I've already given you the blank template in a previous video. You want this to be 4,500 across, 5,400 up and down, and 300 DPI, and you're gonna save those files as PNG files. Now, you can do front and back. Uh, the shirts that I've been doing, I've just been putting an image on the front. You can put front and back designs. It's going to change uh, the cost of your shirt, so it's gonna change the royalty based on your list price, depending if you have front and back designs, or just front or just back. So we're gonna upload our file, and click on this upload button, and it's gonna let you search for a file, and we're gonna use the, uh, let's do hustle mode, because that one had, uh, the other one had a white background. So we wanna have the transparent background so that we can see all the way through to the shirt. This is the first chance you're gonna have to preview the shirt, uh, so you can see exactly what it's going to look like. So you see with the transparent background, you can see all the way through and it looks good. Now you may not like this color from this preview here, but on the next page you're going to see you have options to all of the different colors. Now if I wanted to upload a different file for the back, I would do that here. Uh, but for this example, we're just going to do the front and click on here. We're going to save the selection and continue. Now here's where we're gonna configure our shirt. Now the cost and listing fee here, this is gonna be based on uh, basically only two things uh, that you can change. Now the base for Amazon is $8.10. Uh, of course that may change from Amazon, plus 15% of the list price. That's what they're gonna charge you for a listing fee. The only other two fees that are gonna go into this are if you decide to have two-sided printing. So if you put a back on your shirt, then this fee is going to increase. And if you use this shirt, the American Apparel Slim Fit, this is an extra $1.50 to the, co uh, the cost of the shirt. So depending uh, if you really prefer this, uh, or if you're looking for a lower price in order to maybe increase your royalty, depending on what price point you're trying to hit, you know, what you're trying to do with the shirts, you might choose uh, a higher quality shirt. Uh, I haven't seen both of these shirts side by side, so it's hard for me to say the exact difference in quality. All the shirts that I've done so far have been in the anvil to uh, keep the costs down. Now over here you can pick t-shirt colors. Amazon does recommend only using three. Uh, that's probably to reduce uh, too many choices on the customer to where too many choices may lead to indecision and they don't buy your shirt. Uh, now depending on your design and if it looks good on multiple colors, you may say, you know what, I want to give my customers as many choices as possible and I'm going to give them all of the shirts. And you see going through here, this shirt really looks good pretty much on every uh, shirt. Now if there was a bright green, it might not look that good. Uh, if the white didn't have as much contrast, um, then the shirt might not really pop. Um, but I kind of like all of them, so I'm going to pick all the colors. You can certainly pick one or three or really whatever you choose. Um, but keep in mind that at the time, at this time, this is not going to be editable. Uh, this is very early in their program. There's not a lot that you can edit uh, other than the price once you have made the shirt. So it's really not a big deal if you want to make big edits and say, you know what, I don't like having all these colors. I just want one color. Uh, I would just make a new shirt, right? And just have it as a, a new option on Amazon. Uh, I expect Amazon to let you delete shirts in the future, uh, but at the time that I'm making this video, um, you, you can't. Once they're up, they're up. Uh, so just keep that in mind as you're picking which uh, colors you're going to make available. This is one of the really cool parts. This is a big advantage. I can price the shirt down at under $10, $9.99, a very attractive price point. That's going to include shipping for Prime members or if people buy uh, four shirts, um, they're going to get over that $35 to get free Super Saver shipping even if they're not a Prime member. Uh, that's included. So they're going to make the shirt and ship it uh, to Prime members for less than 10 bucks. Now, you're only going to make $0.39 cent royalty. 
Uh, but a lot of the shirts that I've made, I just want them out there. I want people buying them. Uh, I'm just happy that they're buying the shirts and wearing them at all. I'm not looking to make money on them. Uh, but you can see how your royalty would change if you charge $19.99, uh, which is still a fairly reasonable price for shirt, considering you'll get free shipping uh, as well. Uh, you're going to make almost $9 uh, on each one. And you can play with this and see where you want to, uh, to change it. This is something you can change, so don't worry too much if... Uh, you decide you want to change your price this is one thing you can edit uh, so let's say we we want to make you know about five bucks for sh per shirt $14.99 as a nice price point we're comfortable with the, uh, the relaxed fit if we had a back we could certainly preview what it would look like if there was a back that would be reflected here and it would affect your royalty so just keep in mind if you're doing this to make money you can set your royalty here based off your list price you can change or you can set this as an experiment and see how it's going to affect this. You can even dial in your royalty uh, and then set your list price. Personally, I would recommend hitting some nice price points like the $9.99, $14.99, $19.99. Uh, I just believe they're going to convert better uh, than a very random price if you try to dial in to make $5 even per shirt. Uh, but again, that's up to you. Uh, you can still go back at this point. Uh, if you want to change the uh, the image, if you don't like the way it's looking, you can go back uh, and upload a new file at this point. But here we're going to save the selection and continue. Now this is the product details, and they give you a sales tip here. Product details help customers decide whether to purchase your shirt. Now they're giving you a main sales image. Uh, this is kind of random uh, at the beginning. They're just going to pick a color, uh, but it will be the most popular shirt the fit and the color once you have a few sales going through uh, so don't worry if you don't like if you if you'd really rather have the red if you think it's going to help with sales uh, that'll happen later assuming red is the most popular one uh, so just kind of let the system uh, do its thing at this point uh, i'm gonna give you a little advanced tip that we're going to talk about in the next uh, section uh, is to have a consistent brand name now this could be anything my name's chris i could call this you know, Chris shirts, I could call this Chris's awesome shirts. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I really don't think the brand name is going to drive a lot of search results or uh, conversions uh, specifically on the brand name. Uh, but this will come into play later because this will show up as a clickable link for all shirts under this brand name. So it is a great way to organize your shirts if you're looking to have one link that you can share. Uh, you want to have all your shirts organized. For that reason, I would recommend using a consistent brand name. Now, we're going to touch on this again in a later video. If you decide to use a consistent brand name for all of your shirts, I would also recommend getting that domain name. So if you're going to call this Chris Shirts, then I would want to go and get ChrisShirts.com, and I'm going to show you how to redirect that and build a store for all of your shirts uh, under one .com, under one website domain. So it's just about thinking ahead at this point of how you're going to use these shirts, how you're going to organize them, how you're going to be able to send links and, uh, and drive traffic to your shirts. Uh, and for that reason, it's my recommendation to use a consistent brand name. You certainly don't have to. You could call this you know, hustle mode shirts. Um, you could have a different brand name for every single one of your shirts if that's what you want to do. Um, but for this one, let's, I'm going to call it Prime Time uh, Shirts. It's a .com that I registered last night. So everything that I click on, when I click on this brand name from this product page, once it's created, uh, they will all be in one place. And then I can redirect Prime Time Shirts uh, to that page. And I'll show you how to do that again in the other videos. So title of product, and I'm kind of 50-50 on including the brand name in the title. Um, there's probably times where it's going to make more sense. Uh, than other times, um, but you might want to you know put it in here. Say prime time shirts hustle mode. You can say colon on, uh, and there's not a lot else that you can say about your shirts in terms of uh, you want to describe the shirt, uh, but you're not putting in uh, really product details uh, like new or fits great or the measurements or stuff like that. You're not going to put that in the title. Um, so just looking at this, I would actually probably take the brand name off on this one. Um, I don't I don't think it's helping because it's not related uh, to the title. So if we delete this, you're going to see hustle mode on shirt. Um, 
that's really all that I would say about this product. Uh, the way Amazon search works is keywords in the title, keywords in the product features, and keywords in a product description. Um, I'm not 100% sure that they're all weighted equally, but they're all going to be considered. So you don't have to have the keywords in the title and the product features and in the description all the same as if you're trying to you know, increase your, your possibility of getting in search. Um, as long as they're in one, um, I believe you're going to be okay. So key product features, this is optional. Uh, they're gonna say official brand name. Uh, they're gonna appear in search results on the top of the page. Um, so you might say, I don't know, key product features. I'm not even sure what product features you would say <laughs> for this shirt. A lot of my shirts I've been using, or I've been leaving this blank. Uh, the product description is also optional. So it really depends if you're driving traffic to these shirts and you expect them to convert, then maybe you don't need these these fields filled out as much. Uh, if you're relying on a lot of organic search traffic uh, from Amazon, um, then you might be using these, uh, these fields differently. If you do add a product description, it does have to be 75 characters. You can't uh, decide to put in a very short one. Uh, so for this one, we could say, uh, is it time to hustle? We put that in all capital letters. Then get this great shirt and show everyone that your hus hustle mode is on. Uh, I don't know if that's 75, but we will check it by clicking this box. If it is, it's going to say success. Okay, so that was 75 uh, characters at a minimum. Uh, so here we are. This is a little bit of a preview of what it's going to look like. You've got the different... I love this preview. It's all interactive and works. I mean, this is what a customer is going to see. Uh, they're going to give you the option on the full page to uh, choose men's, women's, or youth sizes. Uh, it's going to show Prime, eligible for Prime, uh, free shipping. It's uh, bringing back the royalty. Make sure you're familiar with what the royalty is. Uh, and that's about it. You can check your spelling to make sure everything is right. And here's one more thing that I want to spend a little time on because you might use these links differently based on the availability. So you can do a sample. So if you want to order uh, like a proof, you could just put it up as a sample directly only. Once the page is approved, they're going to email you the URL or the link to that shirt. The only people who have that link are going to be able to see that page and order that shirt. And there might be times you want to do that for a private event. Maybe you're just making uh, shirts for a family barbecue. You could certainly do that and price them cheap. And uh, everybody can order their favorite size and color. Uh, but it makes no sense to have that on Amazon. You just want a, uh, a private link. I've used a private link for a shirt that's only available to people who are in a private membership group that we have. Uh, only if you're in the group can you order the shirt. Now it's not high security, of course someone could join the group and share the link somewhere else, but it doesn't need to show up on Amazon. Uh, so we did that. Most of them, you guys are probably going to put public sell on Amazon. Now you can change this. I don't think you can go back, but you can certainly do the sample direct link only. This is if you're ordering a proof, you want to order it and see exactly what it looks like before turning it on and promoting it on Amazon. Uh, so you can turn this on. So it will be uh, waiting your approval if you submit it as a sample. Now if you just click on sell, product page is going to be created, you're going to get an email when it's done, uh, and then it's live. And you can share that link and people can start finding it by searching on Amazon. So there's still two more clicks to get this thing up. You're going to submit product, it's going to give you one more chance to say, are you sure? If you're not going to sample your shirt, you're going to get a live URL. Now if I click OK, this page is going to be submitted for approval. Now I'm not going to because I already have this shirt up on Amazon. Um, and actually, let's go look at it. I want you guys to see exactly what it looks like. You're gonna see um, what a full page looks like. So I'll go back to the dashboard and this is the one that I've already made. It's already for sale. I put it at $9.99 because I'm just happy that this is up and uh, available, for, available for sale. Anybody that buys this, I am, I'm happy, I'm thrilled. So you can see, I can click between men and women and I can see the colors, the youth sizes. It's so cool how Amazon resizes the image. You only have to upload one image and they're gonna resize it automatically based on if it's going on a men's, women's, or youth t-shirt. Um, because it's through Amazon, all the images are nice and scannable or uh, and zoomable. 
so customers can zoom in, they can see any details that you might have on there. And you see right here, this is a big key we're gonna talk about in one of the next videos, Prime with free returns. This really sets you apart. There are a lot of people making shirts and uploading designs. Some of them are even print on demand, but they're not Prime eligible and free returns through Amazon. That's a huge differentiation point. A lot of customers search only by Prime uh, shipping options or items with Prime shipping options. It's, it's just crazy. And look at all the sizes that are available. Could you imagine stocking this many colors in this many sizes uh, and waiting on orders to come in? It's print on demand. It is so incredibly powerful. Um, I'm so excited to be using this. So hope you guys are excited. Sorry this video is a little long, but I did want to go through very detailed and show you every option and why you might be using one option over another. So I really hope this video helps. And if you have questions on this, uh, please ask them. I'd be happy to, uh, to help.